the compound hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form water and oxygen. Remember, decompose means to break down. Under normal conditions, this decomposition reaction is extremely slow. However, catalysts can be used to increase the rate of reaction. You can carry out an investigation to find out how different catalysts affect the rate of decomposition. To do this, you can measure the rate of oxygen production. A measuring cylinder is used to measure 50 cubic centimetres of hydrogen peroxide, which is then added to a conical flask. The conical flask is sealed with a rubber bung into which a delivery tube is connected. The other end of the delivery tube enters an upturned measuring cylinder full of water, which is itself standing in a trough of water. During the reaction, oxygen will be produced and will pass through the delivery tube and into the measuring cylinder. The gas will push out the water so the volume of gas can be measured using the markings on the side of the measuring cylinder. Scales are used to measure out 0.5 grams of a catalyst. The catalyst is added to the conical flask and then a stopwatch is started. The volume of gas produced every 10 seconds is recorded in a suitable results table. You continue recording the volume until no more bubbles appear to be produced. Repeat this using different catalysts. The catalysts you can use are manganese 4 oxide, iron oxide, liver, potato, iron, copper 2 oxide, yeast and zinc oxide. It may seem odd to use liver, potato and yeast, but these contain enzymes, which are biological catalysts. To ensure that the enzymes are active, you need fresh samples of liver, potato and yeast. To check the repeatability of your results, you can carry out repeat measurements with each catalyst. The repeats should be similar. This also means that the results are precise with low uncertainty. Your results will never be exactly the same because of the effect of random errors. These cause readings to be spread out about the true value, due to results varying in an unpredictable way from one measurement to the next. For example, the temperature of the hydrogen peroxide or room temperature might have changed, affecting the results. The more repeats you do, however, the lower the effect of random errors on the mean. If there is one result that looks very different to the others, this is called an anomalous result. It's a good idea to repeat it, or if you can't, then don't include it in the mean. Anomalous results are normally due to errors in using the equipment correctly, for example, the bung might not have sealed properly so some gas escaped, or the delivery tube moved away from the bottom of the measuring cylinder so not all the gas was collected. When you have collected your results, you can analyse them by drawing a line graph with a line of best fit. Plot the volume of oxygen gas on the y-axis against time in seconds on the x-axis. You will need to draw a separate line for each of the catalysts, but use the same axes. The graph will help you to see how each catalyst affected the rate of the reaction. From this graph, you can see that the most effective catalyst was manganese 4 oxide. You can see this because the gradient of the line at the start of the reaction is the steepest. This shows that oxygen was produced at the fastest rate when this catalyst was used.